Now I've created the base flange of my sheet metal part. You'll notice a lot of the commands are now grayed out. Next, we're going to make an edge flange. A couple other things, you'll notice there's an equation here, and as I mentioned earlier, the equation is the thickness, or the sheet metal thickness, and we also have a cutlass, just like we would in weldments, and this is now cutlass for the sheet metal. So to make my edge flange, I'm going to do a couple of things, and I would like an edge flange on both of these edges. So I'm going to select that edge, and I'm going to hold control, and I'm going to come over here and select this edge. I'll release control and I'll come up here and I will find the edge flange tool and I'll select it. And then a couple of things will happen. Here we have a window open up like always, the edge flange properties. But you'll notice here in the graphics area I can drag it up and I can drag it down. So for now I'm going to zoom out a bit and I just want to drag it down. Don't worry about the size too much and click and there it stops dragging around. I can come over and grab this arrow and continue to drag it. But what I want to now do is set up the parameters for the edge flange. So I'm going to come back over here into the parameters. And what I want to now do is select edge one. In edge one, we can see it highlighted here. It's the first edge I selected. And I'm going to set up its parameters and then I'll go to edge two and repeat this. So first, I want the angle of this edge flange to be 90 degrees. That's the default. Then I'm going to, going to come down and make its length 5 inches. Notice the preview update itself and it'll be blind. Here I have three options. If I hover them, they'll tell me what they are. And the 5 inches, this is determined how it's measured and the picture describes it. So we can go from the outside of the virtual sharp, the inner, and the tangent. For this one, we're going to select the inner value. And then we want to look at the flange position. Again, hovering over this will affect this here, the flange position. So the first one, the default, is to keep the material inside. The next, we're going to want, the one we will use for this is to put the material outside. And again, you'll notice how the graphic updates. Or we can put the bend outside and we can add distance. So the bend doesn't start until it's past the current edge. Okay. And we can look at each options. These will be discussed in more detail later. For now, we're going to come back here and use this one. I'm going to turn on the checkbox for custom relief type and expand this. And I'm going to use a rectangular relief with the relief ratio of 0.5 or half the material thick. Now that I've set up the parameters for this, I'm going to come back here. With my edge one still selected, I'm going to edit the flange profile. And now, I'll move this window away. We want to make sure that it always tells us the sketch is valid. And it's essentially converted this edge of the part. So I'm going to drag this in a bit. And I'm going to drag this side in a bit. Notice how the sketch went blue and is no longer fully defined. So at this point, I'm going to use my mouse gestures and I'm going to add some dimensions. So this will be 5. I'll accept that. The width of this will be 2. And I could try and add a relation to the center or I can dimension from the midpoint. I can also, I'm going to push escape and I'm going to add a center line. So I'll come here, center line. I'm going to look normal to the sketch. So I could go here to the middle, my origin of the part. And I could click and I could create a center line. I have lots of options here and then I could add, select this line, select the center line while I hold control, select this line. Release control and I can make these symmetric or I could have dimensioned it one inch over. I'm going to go back to my isometric view. So I'm always paying attention to the sketch is valid and this is what I want now. So I'm going to tell it to finish. And I've created my edge flange. If I want to edit this one as well, just like any SolidWorks feature, I can select it. Go back here and edit the feature. And this time I can choose edge flange 2 and I can edit the flange profile. And now I'm going to select Edit Flange Profile, and I'm going to do the same thing with this flange. I'm going to drag it off, drag it over, use my Smart Dimension. And I'll make this fully defined. I'm going to add my center line again. So I added a solid line, I'm just going to select it and switch it to a center line. It needs to be vertical. I'm going to look normal too. 
and I also need it on the origin. So now it's fully defined. Again, I'm going to add symmetry relationship. I could have dimensioned it as well. I'll go back to the isometric view. And I want to see why it's not fully defined. So this edge has moved. We'll fix that. This edge as well has come off and we'll fix that. So now it's fully defined. And I want to read up here because I made, made a mistake. So it says no sketch lines lie on the selected edge. So what I've accidentally done here, if I zoom in, and in this case, my issue is I have deleted the line across here. So I'm going to use my mouse gestures and I'm going to add a line from here to here. And now my preview comes back, tells me my sketch is valid and I'm going to finish it. And I've created my first two edge flange. I'm going to look at this isometrically and I'm going to save my work and we'll continue from there in the